back to Dwayne Brown. We'll be back later with more conversations from the college. Thanks, Karen. It's always good to see the young. And I see some inspiring scientists out there. Now, let's take a look at the highlights from today's events. And when we return, we'll learn more about how the astronauts view today's eclipse. here in Houston. About 40 minutes ago, the six residents of the International Space Station over Canada, south of Hudson Bay, at an altitude of 252 statute miles, with a very, very unique view of today's solar eclipse. We're going to be talking with them about 18 minutes from now and sharing some very, very unique video with you. It was spectacular, I must tell you, and digital still imagery that Randy Bresnik has captured throughout the the first two of three passes the station is making uh, over the eclipse throughout the course of the day today, that has already been posted uh, on social uh, media and will continue to be posted as the is on. But we're looking very much forward to talking to the crew and getting questions and thoughts as they pass over the eclipse uh, just about 40 minutes or so ago. So we'll be back to you in just a few minutes with the crew of Expedition 2 aboard the International for now, back to you in Charleston, Dwayne. Thank you, Rob. And, and coming up later in the show, we'll have another unique eclipse view from space. We'll have imagery from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Ah, it's also about an eclipse. SDL, Solar Dynamics Observatory. Alex, tell us a little bit about SDL. Well, SDL is uh, one of NASA's uh, heliophysics fleet. It gives us an unprecedented view of the sun, incredible detail, incredible time and spatial resolution. It shows us 10 different wavelengths of light at the same time, showing us in mostly extreme ultraviolet light, the sun's outer atmosphere, corona, and chromosphere, where we can see all of the dynamic phenomena that's happening. It is putting down almost two terabytes of data a day giving us these unbelievable views of solar eruptions, solar promises, solar flares, and all of the activity in the sun that drives this weather, what Yari spends her days studying. <laughs> I mean, it's just an amazing because it lets you see in some kind of, so much higher resolution the images from the sun that you can actually understand the origins of space weather, those solar flares, the corona's mass ejections. I mean, put it in perspective, it's like downloading more than a million pictures a day. That's how much data. SDO, wow, that's incredible. Okay, so we're going to go back to Karen Fox, who has a pretty important person with her. Karen. All right. Hello, we are back, and I have Matt Asimino with me, a former NASA astronaut who was on the space shuttle twice. Hello, Matt. Hello, Karen. Hello, Karen. Hello, Karen. Hello, Karen. We are so glad to have you here. Now tell me, was this your first eclipse? Yes, this was uh, my first eclipse. I think this one that passed by uh, my neighborhood in New York on Long Island when I was a kid. So every time I was done looking up at the sky, be careful and what. That was like mine, I think, man. That was a long time ago. So uh, this, is the first, this is the first total eclipse I've been a part of. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what I can get to the next one. This is pretty cool. I'm glad I Tell me a little bit about it. What was your experience? Did it live up to what you were expecting? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, there was certainly a lot of excitement. It was, uh, you know, it came right at the right time. Um, I think uh, all the assets and sources that were out there trying to collect and study the sun had a lot of excitement throughout the country. A little bit of coverage here, though, in South Carolina. 